Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on NLBP TV. Today we're doing a member spotlight with Carrie Cooper out of Ramsey, New Jersey. Thanks Carrie for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so you are a holistic psychotherapist. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about holistic psychotherapy and is it, how does it different from maybe the traditional psychotherapy that people Absolutely. Are? Yeah. For almost my whole practice, I was just a traditional psychotherapist. I worked with anxiety, depression, ADHD, coping skills, and I still work with all of that now. How I look at it is very different. Um, the last few years, I've also gotten a certificate in health coaching a certificate in mindful-based cognitive therapy. And what I really look at now is more the whole person. And I look at anxiety and depression as a symptom of what's going on in their bodies as well. Okay. So many times it's our lifestyle that actually leads to anxiety and depression. There's a reason behind it. Gotcha. So I look for, what are you eating? Are you on sugar highs and then crashing constantly? Because that's going to affect your moods. Yeah. You know, are you taking care of yourself? Are you sleeping well? What's your screen time like? All of these questions really influence who we are and how we feel. And I think right now in the fields of there's now starting to be this push to really look at the mind-body connection. And I think you're also going to see in the future more of a connection between gut health and mental health. Oh, Most of our chemicals are actually made in our gut. So yeah. if we're not eating well, we're not going to feel well. And I feel like, unfortunately, in traditional therapy, food's not always looked at. It's just more looked at, okay, you have anxiety, let's look at coping skills. But we need to look at the bigger picture. We need to look at the whole person. So that's what I do with my clients. That is amazing. Um, it just it actually reminds me of, um, so my children are a little more older now, but I had one who had ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, who was diagnosed with ADHD when she was in like, I don't know, second, third grade, something like that. She's going to go off to college now and she's fine. But um, the first thing I asked the doctor was like, did this have anything to do with her diet? And the doctor was like, no, nothing. And I was like, well, I'm kind of, this is like in the beginning of my own journey. And I was like, but I'm kind of reading <laughs> that food has a lot to do with, you know, what's going on. And we ate pretty healthy, but um, this was before I went completely organic and did my own journey. Um, yeah. And it's so interesting that you say that now because it's been, I don't know, 15 years, a long time. And I think it's becoming more common, like you're saying, that people are looking, or at least our doctors are looking into the food, the screen time, the sugar intake, the really amazing. So... Is um, holistic, what you're what you're doing your your type of therapy when people find you or maybe they're looking for you specifically or I'm just gonna say when they find you are they really shocked at some of the results when they change a diet or when they change screen time like they they weren't thinking themselves like this might be it just give me a pill yes you know? so many times they they come and they tell me I have anxiety. My mom has anxiety. It's who I am. I can't change it. And I say, I don't know if that's really the case. Let's really explore this. Let's really look at your lifestyle and look to see how we could change this. I had one person recently, they were having almost 20 panic attacks a day. I mean, they couldn't leave the house. They couldn't drive any longer. They weren't sure if they were going to go back to school. Wow. It was so serious. We actually wound up doing an elimination diet. Within two weeks, they had no more panic attacks. Oh my goodness. We're clearly really sensitive to something they were eating. And people don't understand that relationship with food. Just like so many times people don't understand um, how good for you meditation is. Right. It literally changes your brain. So when I tell people you need to start meditating on a daily basis, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, <laughs> I'll get to that. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. It's one of those things where if you actually stick with it, you're going to see changes that can last a lifetime. So much of our health is in our own hands, yeah. and people just don't always realize that. But they're always shocked that when you know they cut out some sugar, or when they cut out a dairy, or maybe a gluten for them, everybody's different, how much it changes their life. 
I had another person who was just constantly not sleeping. No matter what we tried, she just wasn't sleeping. Finally, she went to um, a doctor that I recommended. It turns out she had celiacs. Wow. And by the way, she had stomach problems for years and doctors just kept on going, it's IBS, here's a pill. She had celiacs. And once that was resolved, once she was on a better diet, she was sleeping. Our bodies tell us that something is wrong. Right. We have to start listening. We have to stop just assuming, oh, well, my mom was, you know, anxiety and depression, so I must be. Or I have a lot going on in my life, and that's why I'm not sleeping. But what else is happening in your body? Mm. So I'm curious, like, now with your own journey, you mm. said that you were traditional, so clearly your training and everything was in traditional psychotherapy. So mm. what was your like moment that you just went, something's not right. Cause we My aha uh-huh moment? Yeah. So <laughs> I did we, have one of those. Yeah. So we, for we years I was working, um, you know, with really intense populations. I was in residentials. I was in in-home therapy, um, group homes, schools. Um, I had seen it all. And throughout the years it did, I was bothered constantly by the fact that these kids just, they were getting better, but it wasn't a hundred percent. Right. And anytime they were put on a medication and it wasn't working, it was like, oh, well, we'll up it or we'll tweak it or we'll give it a kicker. And they just were never getting 100% better. Um, and it wasn't until I had my own children mm-hmm. and one of my children, um, her mood swings and tantrums were just out of control. They were not normal. I went to every doctor under the sun. Um, and she also had like a little bit of a cough at night. Okay. So I went to every doctor, one ENT said her nose is wrong. We need to do surgery. Another allergist said, well, she's not testing positive for any allergies, but we're going to give her medication. I didn't go any of those routes. And we just kept on trying to figure this out. And one day, one of my friends, um, said to me, I think you need to stop giving her milk. And I said, I think you're crazy because she drinks five glasses a day and loves milk. But I was at my wit's end, so I didn't. And the cough disappeared, and so did the mood swings. And I said, oh my goodness, how many times have I worked with a kid who may have had a food sensitivity, and we didn't know it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I all of a sudden felt this tremendous amount of guilt that I wasn't serving the clients as well as I should have been. Now, for me to talk about food, I can't with my degree. I had to go back and get another degree. So I went back and I went to go get my health coaching certificate so I could bring this into my practice. And it was the best thing I've ever done. Um, I really feel like now I see people who are like, yeah, I'm 100% good. Thanks. Bye. And that's the goal. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. Yeah. So, how, so how, long, how long ago was it that you kind of went on this new path? Um, it was probably eight years ago, which is when I started my own private practice. It was a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. And so you work primarily, I don't know if it's exclusively, but I know it's primarily adolescents. Yes, always. Okay. And I mean, I, it's always ranged. I work with as young as five, and I work with as old as 25. Okay. So that's but my current population, I'd say 80 to 90% is high school and college kids. Okay. Awesome. So are they a little bit surprised? Are their parents surprised at, at the changes that must be happening or when you first say, okay, let's try food elimination? Mm-hmm. They are shocked. Yeah. Um, and the good thing about the parents who come to me and the kids who come to me, either they're looking for a holistic psychotherapist, so they're open to me talking about this, or they have been through so many other therapies and nothing has worked that they will try anything at this point. <laughs> Many times I am maybe the eighth or ninth therapist to get some of these kids. Oh, wow. Um, And it's life-changing when they actually sit down and try a little bit differently. That is incredible. That's just incredible. So I'm just curious, um, do you feel that there's a lot of people like you in the field in general or not really? I don't come across too many of them. No, I don't. And, um, I feel like just now we're starting to have a conversation about food and mental health and the connection. And now, especially in the schools, at least, they are talking about um, the emotional well-being of kids and they are talking about looking at it more holistically. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're still not bringing in the food piece. You know, they are bringing in yoga into some schools, which is fantastic. Um, But it's not 
as much as what needs to be done. Yeah. So, you know, I always kind of chuckle, all these schools now have their signs, we're stigma free, we're taking care of the whole child. Okay, but you're still serving ice cream and soda. Yeah. You know, you need, <laughs> we're, we're missing something still. So I applaud their efforts that they're attempting to now really yeah. talk about mental health and have that conversation, but we're still missing so much of it. Yeah. Yeah. Our and they're still not talking about screen days. time either, which really stresses out these kids. Yeah. I've, I'm also finding that, especially in the schools, um, one, the food's gotten a lot worse. Yes. Right. I know our high school has what they call mindful Mondays, but it's literally like five minutes before homeroom. I don't know what they do. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes um, we have a lot of schools around here doing mindful Mondays. So one of my kids came to me and she said, I had mindful Monday today. I said, tell me what you did. Yeah. And she said, we wrote a list of everything that was negative that we were thinking. And then we tore it up and threw it away. And I said, that's not mindfulness. You don't need to throw away your thoughts. You need to be able to have them, acknowledge them and continue to move on. Not to just circle around them constantly. Yeah. But this idea that you could just get rid of all of your negative thoughts is unrealistic. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like we're almost setting these kids up for failure. Yeah. Mindful Monday is now damaging them. Yeah. Because they're coming to me going, why can't my negative thoughts? And I'm going, no, you can't just erase thoughts. Yeah. But yeah. you don't need to obsess over the thoughts. And that's really the goal of mindfulness, to have the thoughts and to be able to detach from them. But you can't get rid of them altogether. Mm. Yeah. And then, like you said, at least they took the Slurpee machines out of our school. <laughs> so we're, we're getting close. <laughs> I've been battling um, the elementary school for my kids selling ice cream for the last um, 12 years, and they're still selling ice cream every, once a week. It's, yeah, we, we have the same thing. But I, uh, when I was in organic food, I used to speak to um, cancer centers to try to get them to have organic, clean food when they're, you know, people are sitting in their cancer center and you're giving them Rike or something and you're saying, look, we're holistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no. And then you're giving them pizza and French fries, you know? Exactly. Yeah. We're still missing so connected. much of the picture. Yeah. Yes. It's not all connected. Um, it's amazing. I, I love the work that you're doing and connecting it all. And, and do you, do you speak at schools? Is that something I don't. That you do? I don't know if they want to hear me say, get rid of your soda I, machine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it would be amazing. Or maybe, maybe you have to go to like a private school or a library. <laughs> yes. They may not be ready for me yet. <laughs> parents would be. Yes. Like parents would love to hear a talk on mental health and the foods you eat. Um, since, right. since we, we, even in our, in our own um, community where I live, we have like our mental health awareness days and weeks and celebrations. And it's, it's so important. I think there's such a focus on mental health today too, you know, and, stigma and uh, yeah. With the amount of suicides um, yeah. and the oh. amount of just mental health with our children, I've never seen anything like this. I've been in practice for almost 20 years. Yeah. I've never seen so many kids with such high anxiety. Yep. Yep. And it's scary. Yeah, and I, but I also, when you talk about screen time, I'll, they got rid of books. Mm -hmm. These kids are on screens all the time. They even read on screens. Yes. Which to me, that hurts my eyes. I don't do that. But I know these kids do because they've never, they don't know it to be any other way. No. We had it, my kids have never had a textbook. They went to high school and they all get a Chromebook and that's it. Everything's, everything's on the screen. Even their study time is on the screen. But yeah. so then they study and they're on the screen the whole time. And then at midnight, they're shutting down and trying to go to sleep. And they can't. But they, yeah, their minds are racing all the time and, and they talk and their social lives, everything's on the screen. Yeah. So it's a, it's a whole different. And everything is instant. Yeah. It's instant. all instant. Right. So they're used to now this world of everything coming instantly. Yeah. So when something doesn't, that is so difficult for them to deal with. Yeah. Coping skills are another thing I'm finding. They're just lacking. You know, we're not pushing our kids to become independent. Mm. And that's so important. When I meet with high schoolers and their parents, I always say to the parents, does your child do their own laundry? And the parents always go, no. I said, well, when is she going to start? 
She's going off to college. Yes. They need to be independent. And parents look at me like I have just asked them to like do backflips. Wow. And they're like, we don't think they can. I'm like, but they can. If yeah. they can work a smartphone, they can work the laundry. Um, and what parents also don't realize is that when we don't force our children to do things for themselves, they lack confidence. One of the best ways to build confidence in kids is to make them do things. Yeah. Do you think as a society we're doing more of that though? Like, I didn't know if it was just me, but I think it's everyone. Like, I feel like my kids and all of their friends, everyone is more, they're more coddled than I was at the exact same age. And it's all so this year for me to actually realize that because I have kids going to college, but they're actually a year older than I was when I left home. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and now it's starting to click in like, wait a minute. I was completely on my own. Yeah. Financially, emotionally, everything on my own by the time I was their age. So just and now we're at this now, point where, what am I doing? Right. We're at a point where even in college, they're now texting their parents every five minutes. I'm late to a class. What should I say? You know, or wow. can you look at this paper for me? I mean, parents are still editing papers in the college level. So it's a problem. It's a problem when we just don't trust our children. That's interesting. You know, they're, in high school, a parent should not know their kid's homework schedule. This is your child's homework they need to be responsible and be able to do this on their own. And unfortunately, because this is not happening, my phone rings off the hook in December with kids not going back for their second semester. Oh. And yeah. it's so much harder to then build them back up when they've now dropped out of school. Yeah, yeah, wow. So you gotta lay the groundwork in high school. They should be doing their own laundry. They should be able to cook simple meals. They should be able to be responsible for their homework, to be able to budget their own money. Mm -hmm. These are life skills, and we've somehow it's forgotten them. Right? I don't know what happened, but <laughs> 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 I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this member spotlight today. Is there anything I forgot to mention, or that you'd just like to say before we let you go? Um, one other thing, one other part of my practice is what I do. Um, I do parent strategy sessions. Oh, great. So sometimes a kid doesn't want the therapy, but the parents are kind of like, well, we need some guidance on how to fix our family. Maybe that. there's too much arguing or kids are just distant. So I take parents in and it's two hours and we talk about what's going right, what's going wrong in the family. What do you want to correct? And we do an entire roadmap of how to fix that. That is fabulous. And I take it that's in person? Yes. In your office? Okay. Um, I'm just thinking, I bet you people would love to do that on Zoom from all over the country with you. Yes, I do do a lot of FaceTime as well, um, because people are kind of all over the state of New Jersey right now for me, so I do a lot of FaceTime okay. sessions too. I love that. I love that. And is that like a regular support group? It's not a group. It's, um, you know, just like a mom or a dad will come see me okay. and talk about their family for the two hours. Gotcha. I see. Gotcha. Nice. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. If people are watching this um, in replay, which they all are, mm -hmm. um, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, my website's CarrieCooperHolisticTherapy.com um, or my phone number is 201-256-4141. Excellent. And uh, Carrie's information will be in our show notes and a link to her website so you can get in touch with her um anytime you want if you're really curious about her work or if you live in her area in new jersey right um yep. we can do that so thank you carrie for joining us today and being a part of our member spotlight